explain what they just read. If they're accurate, then they can sign it. Who do they explain it to? What if the person? The lawyers. Ha, the because judge. the lawyers are all, because the judge is always the smartest person, not just the elected schmo who. Uh, Even if he's not the smartest person, he's a judge. He judges. That's his job. Yeah, he's the one who judges. I don't know how much I trust some judges sometimes. Do you need a jury to sit there and listen to someone describe the contract they just read to prove that they I understand don't trust what they're a signing? Jury for crap. The only <laughs> people on a jury are people who can't. It get has to be duty. someone who decides things. We have to, we have people deciding things. We need someone to decide. That's who it is. The judge. Yeah, That's the way it works. See, the thing is, if you don't like what a judge decides, you can get a smarter judge who's been a judge for longer. You get is, like four tries. It, it doesn't usually matter, works because that's not how it is. It's not how it is, but it's how it should be. Eh, we'll see. Well, we won't see because things probably won't ever change. Not anytime soon, anyway. No, not soon. Unless we get some uh, parasing happening around here. We're not gonna have parasing around. Nah, here. nah. But all of Europe might paris. Nah, I don't think Germany will. No. Nah. Nope. Italy, Italy, they're fine. They'll just ride their scooters. Well, Ciao! Well, France, France will Paris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you look back historically, this isn't the first time that, you know, the poor rioted in Paris. Remember the whole Paris Commune? No. Oh. I remember, uh, Vive le Roi. Vive le Roi! And uh, what was that guy's name? Horatio uh, Hornblower? No, 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 no. The French guy. That narrows it down a lot. The Count e de Monet? No, the evil guy. Who, uh, Robespierre? Yes! <laughs> you just remember Robespierre because of that game we used to play. No, I actually, I didn't think of it until you said his name. What, the, the game did not come before in the thought. <laughs> you said Robespierre, and I was like, that was the guy. And then the card appeared in my head with his face on it <laughs> afterwards. And then you said it. Not uh, Louis the Sixteenth. No, he sucks. Not uh, whoever was against Horatio in that one episode of Hornblower. No, he sucks. Yeah. What was that uh, cake lady? Oh, you mean Marie Antoinette? Yeah, that lady. You know, let them eat cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have no bread. Let them eat cake. Yes, an accurate rendition of what uh, she actually said in those faded final days. Complete but with the accurate uh, period voice, I might add. Off with your head. <laughs> so it's science and tech day Alright And we can't argue about science So we'll argue about tech All Window right. managers Ooh. You know I've pretty much tried every window manager there is I have tried four of them And they all suck Yeah but in different ways Always in a different way See I've noticed a lot of people Just like people I talk to at work Or people I talk to on the street Or just people who don't use Linux Or they don't use it much you, picking a window manager is one of the first problems they have because that's not even a consideration in Windows. It is. There used to be that light step thing, or I don't know if it, I think it still exists. But all those things you had to go out and get. By default, you install Windows and you get Windows. Well, by default, if you install Ubuntu, you get GNOME, and if you install Kubuntu, you get KDE. Yeah. And there was yeah. just a thing. My, Mark Shuttleworth is using Kubuntu, and he wants Kubuntu to become as. Because right now, Kubuntu is like the back seat. He wants Kubuntu to be, like, in the passenger seat right next to Ubuntu. Uh, I don't like KDE so much. I don't like it so much either, but apparently some people do. And KDE distributions are dying left and right. So, I mean, KDE was the first window manager I used ever. I mean, it was back in the back, back days. It was KDE 1. Yep. Then KDE 2 came out, and I was like, oh. oh. And did, then did 3 come out? And yeah. then 4? Well, no, no, no. I don't, <laughs> is 4 out? I don't know what version's out now, but... When two, I gave up. when two came out, it was like a hundred times better than one, and then when three came out, it was a little bit better than two, and then I discovered other things and KDE was poop. Yeah, yeah. The real pro KDE would be good. The problem is, it uses this the Qt library, which I don't like as much as the GTK library at all. You know, it's all bleh. It's not none of the skins for it even look good. They're all ugly and bloated and. Not even considering the licensing issues. Well, plus KDE itself, I mean, unless you pre-link it, it's slow as fuck. Oh, it's slow. Horrendously slow. Pre-linking will fix that, but a lot of people don't want to go through the trouble of pre-linking. I don't pre-link. It's not worth the effort. I pre-link. Yeah. I, but I have an older, slower computer, and I need to pre-link. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking about buying a dual CPU Athlon 64 machine someday. Ooh. Maybe a dual, dual core. Then I won't need to pre-link anything. <laughs> 
But the real problem with KDE is that there's just so many options. It's like you open an options window. It's like a hajillion checkboxes. And yet, even though there's so many options, half the time I still wouldn't find exactly what I wanted to do. Yep, it's just not in there. There are some good things with KDE, like K-Parts. Yeah. K-Parts is good, which lets you put any piece of a, like, pieces of programs in others. So, like, you'll be using one program, and then, like, K-Mail will creep into the same window, you know? And some of the KDE programs are good. I guess KOPete is okay. It's like the G aim of KDE. KWrite, KMail, they're okay. I mean, I guess I look at KDE and GNOME as being pretty much equivalent because they're both the giant window managers full of stuff. Well, because they're not just a window manager. They're a desktop environment. Yeah, they come with utilities. They it's come like in with GNOME. Games. In GNOME, the window manager is Metacity. You can use just Metacity if you want. I actually use Metacity with IceWM oh, at look, work. Look at that. Yeah. Well, I did. I stopped doing that for reasons I won't get into now. But well, <laughs> Metacity is kind of slow on an old machine. Yeah, Metacity is kind of slow, but not as slow as uh, anything that's even remotely related to KDE. Well, you know, it's how it is. But, you know, when you want, people want all that stuff. They want it to be comfortable, and they want to have everything in a GUI, and they want to be able to do all these things. And you know what? I do, too, because I run GNOME on my main machine. Yeah. There are some real useful things in, in KDE and GNOME that I, you can do that you can't do without. Like, I know Nautilus lets you um, browse to, like, SSH, you know, uh, SFTPs. Yeah. That's real useful. Uh, what else is really useful? You know what the thing is? If you use KDE or GNOME, you get a working system tray. Yes. No matter any other window manager desktop environment, the system tray is always broken or fickle or, or something. Yeah, or IceWM is just ugly. Ugly. Sometimes you can use a program like XY SysTray or things like that, but they're never perfect. And you have to move nah. them around, and they're all broken. And I mean, GNOME right here, I've got my little system tray, and I've got oh, my yeah. little... Oh, yeah. Don't even think about calling it the notification area, no, which is the God. proper name for God. it. God. <laughs> It's, I got my little uh, GAM thing. I got my little uh, character input thing for Japanese and Korean and all that other stuff. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. You know. Basically, you got to choose between do you want it? Do you want a, like an all-encompassing environment that'll just work and then you can tweak it within itself, or do you want more customizability but comes with that great responsibility? Well, it's not so much that you're losing. Uh Customizability, because you can use FVWM, which is infinite customizability. Yes. It's just not in a GUI, and it's not easy, and there's, you know, if you no, want No, it's not easy. I tried to make an FVWM, and I started stealing things from other people, because other people have made these freaking amazing FVWM desktops where things fly around and everything's pretty and perfect, but they're so customized to the person who made it, I can't even use them. The real problem with FVWM is that you can do anything technically, but... To do things that are outside the normal bounds of what FVWM does, you have to do something crazy hackish. Like, if you want something to fly across the screen, there isn't a function like, make it fly across the screen to the right. You pretty much have to, like, redraw it, moving it to the right by X pixels and write a function that does it with a loop. You know, and, and you, have to go, you have to actually program stuff. And sometimes you don't program it directly like that. Sometimes yep. it's like, use some other obscure thing and bind it to an event and then force the event to happen artificially and make it do something. Yeah, scarily enough, a lot of people do that anyway. There are ricers for FVWM, and they do crazy, silly things. Well, a lot of them just have stuff done. And once you get to the point where most of it's done, you can just keep using it. Yep. And if you have a lot of free time, like I did in college when I used FVWM, you could do that. But then as soon as I switched up monitor resolutions, everything fell apart, and now I just don't use it anymore because I don't have time. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's also the real simple little uh, ones, like ISWM, which is real tiny. It looks like Windows 95, but it works. Yeah, there's AEWM, which is kind of like that. What's that one Steve uses, the really light, cool one? Well, that's Ion. That's, that's completely different. Yeah. But there's... In terms of little do-nothing ones, is like all the boxes, F open box, flux box. You know, it's just they give you like a menu and a bar and a background. Yep. And everything else is up to you. You know, oh, you can add desktops. But those don't, it's like people use those and they're like, oh, this is so great. I, it's like you can't even, it doesn't even do anything. Yeah. I can't customize it to do stuff I want. And it's really, it's just like a tiny thing that just like, it's like a placeholder. It's like, I need a window manager. Here's one that does nothing. I mean, if you're going to do that anyway, just why even have a GUI? What are you doing? Well, they have, they got like a menu, and they get virtual desktop switcher. 
Yeah. That's all they get, pretty much. Telling you, man, just terminals and rat poison. Rat poison. I mean, 